Ladies and gentlemen, we spent the last couple of lectures talking about different ways that rocks can be broken down at the Earth's surface called weathering. We learned about mechanical weathering, where rocks are physically broken down into smaller pieces. And we learned about chemical weathering, where there are certain forces that change the composition of minerals in the rocks uh, and other chemical reactions that can occur. Today, we are going to be learning about factors that can affect the rate of weathering. Some places or some types of rocks might experience weathering at a different rate. They're going to be broken down quicker on the surface than other rocks. And we're going to learn what can affect things. So the first thing I want to talk about is surface area and rate of weathering. You may recall that whenever I talk about mechanical weathering, uh, I mention one change being that it breaks rocks up into smaller pieces and it increases the surface area. I want to explain what I mean by that. First off, when I talk about surface area, I'm just talking about the exposed area of all the faces of a rock. So if we look at this cube right here on the left hand side, and we were to break it up into smaller cubes, we now have more edges exposed. In fact, if we break it up into a bunch of small cubes, we could have twice as much surface area with the same amount of rock. If we break those cubes into even smaller cubes, we can double the surface area again, still keeping the same amount of rock. So the general idea is this, the more pieces we break one rock into, the more surface area is exposed because there's more surfaces, more edges, stuff that was in the middle, is now on the edge. And so mechanical weathering is what is going to do this. Remember, mechanical weathering is just some forces that will break rocks up into smaller pieces. So if we look at uh, this arrow showing increasing surface area as we move to the right, that could also say increasing mechanical weathering or more mechanical weathering. Why is this important? Well, as it turns out, Chemical weathering happens on the outside of the rocks. Only things that are exposed to the elements, whether it's water or air, uh, are affected by chemical weathering, can have those, those minerals changed. So the more surface area is exposed, the more chemical weathering that can happen and the quicker chemical weathering can, ha can happen. So again, mechanical weathering can increase exposed surface area and increased exposed surface area means that chemical weathering can happen quicker. Next thing I want to mention is rock characteristics. When I am talking about rock characteristics, I'm simply talking about the physical characteristics of rocks. And there are many that can greatly affect weathering. For example, whether or not a rock has cracks. Uh, water can get into the cracks. That could cause frost wedging. Or that exposes more surface area to chemical weathering. So if a rock has cracks, it's going to be weathered much quicker than a rock with no cracks. What about mineral composition? Uh, rocks are made out of different things. Some rocks are harder than others because of the minerals we contain. In general, igneous rocks are harder than sedimentary rocks. So igneous rocks are going to be more resistant to certain types of weathering. Also, some minerals uh, don't go through the same chemical reactions that other minerals do. Silicate minerals tend to be very resistant to lots of types of weathering, whereas the uh, Carbonite minerals, carbonate minerals in some sedimentary rocks might weather very quickly from water or things like that. So the stuff that a rock is made out of, the chemicals that a, the minerals that a rock is made out of are going to affect how quickly it weathers. Another big factor in the rate of weathering is climate. Different areas are gonna experience different weathering. And when I say climate, I'm just saying the weather conditions that prevail in an area over a long period of time. Now, if we look at climate as a whole, uh, we live in a desert here in Lancaster, California, and there's not a lot of living stuff outside your window if you're in the middle of the desert. There's some plants, there's some animals, but there's a lot of just barren, sandy dirt. So climate has a large effect on the amount and type of biological activity in an area. You can imagine if you were someplace more wet, like the Northeast, uh, that isn't so hot and dry, there's going to be a lot more living things, and that's going to cause a lot more biological activity, which is one of our types of mechanical weathering. Temperature on its own has a large effect of weathering. High temperature increases the rate of chemical weathering. Uh, the warmer it is, the quicker those chemical reactions can occur. Also, frost wedging requires 
the temperature to change from below freezing to above freezing and back again regularly. We need the ice to freeze, we need it to melt and freeze again to break apart those rocks via frost wedging. So if you don't have the right temperatures, your climate isn't going to get frost wedging. For example, uh, this picture here is of the rainforest. There's a lot of moisture in the rainforest, a lot of water, but there's not going to be any frost wedging because it's never going to freeze. Moisture is something else that can greatly affect the weathering of rocks. Hydrolysis, just chemical reactions in water, that requires more water. Again, if we look in the desert, not too much hydrolysis going on most of the time. If we look in the rainforest, hydrolysis is going to happen a lot quicker because there's a lot more water. And once again, I mentioned frost wedging. If you are in a place that is cold but gets zero rainfall, there's not going to be any frost wedging because there's not going to be any water in the cracks to freeze. Next thing I want to talk about is spheroidal weathering. That word spheroidal means having to do with spheres. So this is a type of chemical weathering forming rounded or spherical shaped rock. And the reason this happens is not some weird chemical reaction. It's just physics, and this is going to happen in any rock with uh, many joints or cracks. So look at this diagram on the right-hand side again. It shows how this can happen over time. And the reason this happens is because if we look at a single block of rock, the corners have more surface area, exposed surface area, than the flat faces. So the corners are going to weather the quickest. And as they weather, they're going to get rounded. So because uh, rock with cracks or joints has lots of corners on it. Those corners are going to get weathered first, and as you can see in this diagram, they are going to get rounded, causing rounded or sphere-shaped objects. And this is just because those corners and edges have more surface area than the flat faces. Last thing I want to talk about is differential weathering. This is just the weathering of different parts of a rock at different rates. If you look at this picture, we've got uh, kind of flat-ish land with three weird pinnacles and this is caused by differential weathering so the rock around these pinnacles was broken down and removed at a quicker rate than the rock is left so this can be caused by differing hardness in different parts of the rock mineral composition shape presence of cracks lots of things that we learned about that affect the rate of weathering in this lecture might be present in different amounts in different parts of a rock. And that can cause weathering to occur at different rates. And that is how we get these really weirdly shaped rock formations. So if you see something like an arch in Arches National Park, that is caused by differential weathering. Different features in different parts of the rock cause weathering at different rates, which forms really weird shapes. Quick wrap up now. Many factors affect the rate at which chemical or mechanical weathering occurs. The first big one is surface area of rocks. The more smaller pieces that rocks are broken into, the more quickly weathering is going to happen, specifically chemical weathering. Rock characteristics such as hardness and mineral composition can affect the rate at which different rocks weather. Granite is going to weather more slowly than sandstone, for example. The climate of an area affects how quickly the rate of those rocks weather. Again, a desert with less moisture is going to have less weathering than a rainforest. Uh, temperature and moisture both can affect the rate of weathering depending on the type of weathering we're talking about. We also learned that different rates of weathering can cause changes in the rocks in terms of shape. For spheroidal weathering describes how rocks tend to become rounded by weathering, and differential weathering describes how weird shapes uh, can be made like arches or pinnacles because of different properties of different parts of a rock.